Really good news story here. This is something that actually is very significant because China processes most of the world's or refines most of the world's lithium. And one country controlling most of one thing is, is well, never good. So Tesla decided a number of years ago, more than five years ago, I believe, to build its own lithium refinery, which is now operational. And in some ways, it's a little bit revolutionary, kind of like Tesla's original cars with gigacasting and structural battery packs. Let's have a look at it. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. Tesla says its Texas lithium refinery is now operational. And it's unlike anything in North America. Now, Musk has described the site as the most advanced and largest lithium refinery in the United States, which would be fair uh, considering it just opened and Tesla built it. It probably is the most advanced. Tesla has confirmed that the refinery is now operational, which marks a big milestone for, well, not just for Tesla, but also for the US battery supply chain. In a newly released video, Tesla staff detailed how the facility converts raw spodumene ore directly into battery grade lithium hydroxide, making it the first refinery of its kind in North America. Isn't that crazy? That is, that is a little bit insane, right? This is the only refinery in the US that's capable of doing that. Musk separately described the site as both the most advanced and the largest lithium refinery in the United States. And he's clearly correct because it's the only one of its kind. I mean, what are you going to compare it against? If you'd like to book a paid consultation, uh, you can do so. And I'll put a link in the description below. If you want advice on what electric car to buy, solar systems, all that kind of stuff, you can do that. Anyway, Tesla staff at the lithium refinery near Corpus Crispi explain that the facility processes spodumene, a lithium-rich hard rock ore, directly into battery-grade lithium hydroxide on site. And this approach bypasses intermediate refining steps commonly used elsewhere in the industry. According to the staff, spodumene is processed through kilns and cooling systems before undergoing alkaline leaching, purification, and crystallization. So there's a fair few steps involved. There's actually about five steps. The resulting lithium hydroxide is suitable for use in batteries for energy storage and, of course, electric cars. And this is the kind of lithium you need. You can't just go and mine lithium from a mine and start sticking it to batteries. You've got to go through this pretty complex refining process first. Tesla employees said the process is simpler and less expensive than traditional refining methods, though. So Tesla, it sounds like, have improved the process. Staff said the process eliminates hazardous byproducts typically associated with lithium refining. Our process is more sustainable than tradition, traditional methods and eliminates hazardous byproducts and instead produces a co-product called anhydride used in concrete mixes, said the employee from Tesla. So the refinery's development timeline has been actually quite fast, quicker than you might expect because the project broke ground in 2023 and basically was completed by the end of 2025. And what they did is they apparently ran feasibility studies, design and construction in parallel, which is quite unusual, probably not uh, legal in a lot of places around the world, but anyway, it worked. And this compressed schedule enabled the fastest time to market for a refinery using this type of technology. Musk echoed the significance of the project in some posts on X. He said it's the largest lithium refinery in America, and in a separate comment, he described the site as the most advanced lithium refinery in the world, saying it's very clean. Now, I'm not sure it's the most advanced in the world, but it is the most recent one to open, and most of the refineries in the world are in China. By bringing large-scale lithium hydroxide production online in Texas, Tesla, it's basically reducing its reliance on the Chinese or on any country or any person or any business, really. The refinery also is kind of part of Tesla's efforts to improve its vertical integration. But here's the thing. I think Tesla might be able to produce batteries now at a lower price than its rivals. If you think about it, General Motors, Ford and Tesla and Volkswagen – all have their own battery factories either built or being built that'll be producing lithium-ion phosphate batteries that they're licensing from CATL 
that's going to be the main type of battery you're going to see in American EVs over the next 10 years. It will. It'll take over the market the same way it has in China. Now, sodium wood will eventually, but that's a long way off in the US. In China, it's going to happen much faster. But in the US, which is a protectionist market, sodium's going to take a while. So it's going to be lithium ion phosphate. Therefore, these lithium, uh, this lithium Tesla has, it'll be able to, it'll basically mean Tesla will be able to produce these batteries at a lower cost than its rivals. And the other advantage Tesla will have is it will be able to, well, probably, assuming Tesla's production continues at its current pace, actually make more batteries. And the more batteries you make, the cheaper they are to manufacture, obviously. So General Motors famously promised in 2025 it would beat Tesla in EV production. Obviously, it's not even close. And you would think this gives Tesla just one additional advantage that it did not have before. But the only thing I'd say is when sodium ion batteries do take off in America, which could be in about 10 years from now, um, this facility will be valuable, just not as valuable. Guys, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Guys, if you want to install solar panels, a home battery or a home charger, the best way to do this for your situation is to go to the links in the description below and they'll take you to a page where you can compare everyone. So depending on where you, it doesn't matter where you live, a lot of people email me all the time saying, well, what solar system should I get? Who should I go with? What battery should I get? What electric charger should I get? Well, click in the links in the description and you can actually compare all the different choices and find the best deal for you. I'll put that link in the description below. Additionally, there is a battery savings calculator link and also a federal battery rebate calculator. I personally have found that I'm not paying for electricity at all, and that's including charging my two electric cars and also running my home power, my home sauna, um, nothing, not paying anything at all. And I think a lot of people are getting misled. They think that getting a battery is not worth it. Actually, I think it is worth it. So those links are in the description below.